Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Dice and EA have just revealed Hazard Zone, Battlefield's offer to fans who love battle royales like Warzone or high-stakes scavenger games like Escape from Tarkov. Indeed, the four-player game mode will be blending elements from both while adding some signature Battlefield flair. Hazard Zone takes place in 2040, just after a Kessler effect knocks out about 70% of the world's satellites. As a result, both the US and Russia have opted for launching low-orbit satellites. These capture important intel like photography, heat map imagery, they scan IDs, and uncover other valuable information. Interestingly, this actually has historical precedent. The CIA ran a similar low-orbit satellite program in the 60s, ironically called Corona, which was used for photographic reconnaissance and mapping programs. The satellite data capsules were captured mid-air instead of on the ground in an effort to keep them from falling into enemy hands. In Battlefield 2042's Hazard Zone, that last bit isn't an option. Instead, once on the ground, your squad will try to recover these critical data drives from crashed satellites and then extract with them. That may sound simple until you realize other competing squads are trying to do the exact same thing and you might come face to face with the lethal occupying forces or a tornado. More on that stuff here in a minute. Getting down to brass tacks, as a game mode, Hazard Zone has five stages. You'll start the match strategizing with your four-person squad and deciding which specialist and what gear to equip. Unlike the core Battlefield 2042 experience, your squad cannot contain multiples of the same specialist, which means you've got to have some kind of clear strategy here. The main objective, and you got to remember this, it's not to kill. It's to extract with as many data drives as possible, and how you do that is up to you. Don't forget to choose the right weapons and gear for the job, though. Every squad should have at least one Intel scanner. That's a device unique to Hazard Zone that reveals approximate satellite data locations. This phase is also where you can equip tactical upgrades. There are plenty of these, and most of them available through what are called dark market credits. That's the currency earned in Hazard Zone for the successful data extractions and other tasks. Everyone also gets access to additional armor and bonuses to credits as tactical upgrades. In the next stage, you'll insert from the Exodus to your predetermined destination, which can include any one of the seven base maps from Battlefield 2042. Uh, I think that is a great idea that's really going to keep things mixed up, certainly much more interesting than one singular kind of battle royale map. Uh, I'm sure developers are also hoping that this means more core Battlefield players might be more likely to give the game mode a go, since they'll already be somewhat familiar with the maps. But once your boot's on the ground, welcome to the retrieval phase. Here, you'll locate fallen satellites using the Intel scanner. This device also helps track the data drives that are held by enemy squads. It doesn't give an exact location, more of a general area, but uh, if you're carrying some drives, you will need to stay on your toes. In addition to that threat, you'll have to keep an eye out for those occupying forces. Those are AI-controlled soldiers patrolling the map who are hostile to everyone. Midway through the game, yet more satellites will fall from the sky. And these actually contain several data drives. They haven't been picked over yet, and they are thus more valuable than those that you already find on the ground. Next comes the first extraction. A randomized location is chosen as an extraction point, and for the squads who want to take their data and run, that is your first opportunity. The first squad on board the CV-38 Condor gets to take their winnings home. Uh, I would not expect it to be uncontested, as other squads might have that same idea. It is worth noting that if only one member of your squad manages to survive and get extracted in Hazard Zone, all of you in the squad still get your Dark Zone credits. However, the longer you stay in the game, the greater the potential rewards. Obviously, as you recover more data from satellites or you eliminate enemy teams for theirs, you're going to have to 
kind of balance that out, risk and reward. How long do you want to stay? Uh, do you have enough data? Are you going to go for everything? What is it that your team is going to do? In the course of this, well, you might get downed, right? If you're shot in a hazard zone, you can crawl to safety and ask for a revive. However, if you bleed out and are killed, you are placed in the spectator screen. Thankfully, your team can use a squad reinforcement at a reinforcement uplink to bring you back. These are scattered throughout the maps, uh, but those reinforcements can be purchased with Dark Zone credits or can also be found on the maps. However, you can only use them once. The second and last extraction comes about 10 minutes into the game. All remaining teams battle for a seat on board the last Condor before the area becomes a no-fly zone thanks to an approaching storm. Again, gotta remember only one team is getting on that bird, so make your moves carefully. Throughout your time in Hazard Zone, DICE says there is a chance that a tornado may strike the battlefield. This may change how you approach objectives, and of course you can even use it to quickly move from one part of the map to another. Hazard Zone supports 32 players on Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC, while on last-gen consoles, the magic number is 24. That may seem kind of small, but based on the map sizes, I think that's a good number, right? We gotta remember only two squads are getting out alive each game, and so it's certainly going to be competitive, and that is something that people who enjoy battle royales, uh, those kinds of games, they absolutely feed off of. I also want to mention that you can decrease the cost of tactical upgrades or items for your loadout by extracting successfully multiple times in a row. Dice call this an extraction streak and it's unique to each specialist and resets after a failed extraction. On a personal note, while Hazard Zone certainly sounds like an interesting take on the genre, I am curious if it will draw in core Battlefield players. It may very well appeal to those fatigued Warzone players and those who are fans of games like Tarkov or even The Division, right? The idea of extracting something. In the briefing I had with devs, they didn't specifically mention anything about solos or duos, though it certainly seems like it would be a relatively easy possibility. No word yet uh, either on whether or not it will be free to play, right? There were rumors about that for quite some time. Personally, I'm more interested in how this game mode connects with the core Battlefield experience. I am not somebody who's really a fan of Battle Royale games, so unless Hazard Zone nets me some cool camos or unlocks for core multiplayer, it's not going to be a huge draw for me. But like I said, that's me. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Does Hazard Zone appeal to you at all? Tell me down below in the comments. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, if not, a dislike. Make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to get updates on all future Battlefield content. Again, don't know how closely I'll be paying attention to Hazard Zone, but uh, who knows? Maybe I'll really enjoy it, right? I'm certainly open to that possibility. But if you want to stay up to date, subscribe, tap the bell. If you want to support the channel, keep your money, share this video. And as always, thanks for watching.